Like, this is a child on a skateboard making fun of you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. We're talking about marriage today. Marriage. Because there's a lot of confusion out there. Coming up next. Okay, so this happened a little while ago, a couple months ago. Uh, this comes from WAF.com, number of websites, not anything really reputable. Uh, this woman marries the color pink in a historic Las Vegas wedding. Now, there's already enough headline in that that you're like, I, doesn't, uh, I don't even know if I want to waste my time. But bear with me, bear with me. Um, waste your time with me. We're going to go maybe 10 or 15 minutes today. Not very long. Um, thanks for clicking, by the way. Because this is just... It's really sad more than anything else. Some of the comments, by the way, on this article is like, oh, people are getting upset. My woman does something and, you know, half the people get freaking out about politics. It's not really about politics, though. It's it's the mar marriage and family... And, and the institution that God made is pre-political. It's before, it's like life. Life is before politics, right? Politics, marriage, marriage licenses, marriage protection, all that stuff comes way after. Like I didn't get married for a tax break, right? I didn't get married, you know, for some social whatever. I got married because I love my wife and because I want to honor the Lord. That's why. And that's why I stay married also. Uh, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons. And... When we have something like a Burgerfell in 2015 that says, well, you know, two guys can get married and two women, but that's it. We're drawing the line there. We're not three guys or three women or a man and a, <coughs> a man and a little boy or, you know, whatever, uh, or a color, you know, then the, there's, there's no stopping anything, right? It's just, we're off to the races. So this is from Las Vegas, Nevada. January 1st means new beginnings and new resolutions. But for Kitten K. Sarah will be for her historic wedding anniversary. I'm actually marrying the color pink, she tells them. Okay, And of course, no one objects, right? Because you can't. And that's my point. You can't object when you just literally leave the door open and then you're wondering why there's raccoons and squirrels and cats and dogs and a random homeless guy sleeping in your living room and your door is wide open. You can't complain about that. You left the door open. You did. Right? And so it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It doesn't have any critique or any real praise either. Now, if this was two dudes, it'd be a different story. But anyway. She says she's been dating the color pink for 40 years. Or a relationship, some, some say. This is a bunch of reports on this. The idea of tying the knot with the color came two years ago when a kid skateboarding was poking fun at her for wearing pink. A kid asked me on a skateboard. I mean, this is not the Babylon Bee, right? This isn't the Babylon Bee. I said it isn't, okay? It's not the Babylon Bee. A kid on a skateboard asked me, wow, you love pink, right? I said, yeah, I love it so much. <laughs> he's like, it sounds like she's like in sixth grade. He goes, quote, you love it so much. Why don't you marry it? I thought, this kid's onto something. Really? Kitten? Sarah? Really? I mean... This is the same logic as someone looking at you as a child and says, why don't you take a picture? It'll last longer, right? Or, and that's not even that one bad. Or, you know, if you cross your eyes, they're going to stay like that, right? You ever hear that as a kid? Like, this is a child on a skateboard making fun of you. At minimum, you should have been like, well, whatever. What a weirdo. But see, because this woman has such a twisted view of marriage, because, you know, obviously this isn't marriage, but neither is two dudes. But we start to get squirmy and be like, well, maybe. No. Right? It either is or it isn't. Like, it isn't, it isn't, well, maybe. 
right? But we've been so desensitized. There hasn't been a 40, 50 year uh, desensitization, however you say that word, uh, campaign by Hollywood and the media in general to wear down our wits about what marriage is. But that's been happening. There's definitely much on that, and that's probably another video for another time. But this woman's wearing pink. It's a very small article. Uh, Hebrews 13, 4. God has much to say about marriage, right? A lot of people think, wow, it's just marriage. Oh, the church shouldn't get political. Oh, you're just, blah. it's just, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't you care. Who cares? It's not hurting anybody. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it is hurting this woman though, right? And where is the standard for hurt? Is there some law that's as well if it's hurting something or somebody? Now we have, you know, mental hurt too, like spiritual abuse and all these like imaginary hurts that like you can't quantify. Now, if you punch somebody in the face, yeah, that's wrong. You shouldn't punch somebody in the face. But what if they punch you in the face? Well, you know, what if you're boxing, right? There's certain contexts in which punching somebody in the face makes sense. But if somebody says, hey, I'm marrying the color pink, and you have zero understanding or remembrance of what God has plainly said and has supported for centuries, for millennia, and every other culture, I mean, Listen, ancient Rome, the Greeks, you know, Babylon, like all these, you know, Mesopotamia, ancient China, like nobody would have done this, like not even close. Now they would have probably had some sort of relationship. Uh, there was, you know, a bunch of other aberrant forms of sexuality, but like what? Let marriage be held in high honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. Leviticus tells us, you must not like carnally with your wife. Of course, we have Exodus in general that says you should not commit adultery. Oh, that's just a, that's just a, you know, two people, a man and a woman. What's wrong with this woman having a, a relationship with pink? Well, first of all, she's not having a relationship with pink. But again, this is going to happen and has already happened. I think uh, there was another article, I couldn't find it, uh, a couple years ago. Doug Wilson had written an article, a book rather, about a man in the future who marries a uh, adult toy, a large full-size adult toy. And, uh, I found an article from like two years ago, this bodybuilder marries his adult toy. But again, we, we should, we should be aghast at that and we should be shocked at that. And we should shake our heads in sadness at that. But it's also because they don't know and they refuse to know the truth so as to be saved. They refuse God from on high, who reveals himself specifically through the Lord Jesus. Natural creation and, and other things as well. Common grace, some call it. But when God speaks about a matter, which is a foundational pillar of society, right? If people, everybody did this, there would be no society. We'd all just be hyper-individualistic, selfish people. For Timothy 4, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits, teachings of demons, through the sincerity, insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage, who forbid marriage, and require abstinence from food that create, God created to be received with thanksgiving, those who who believe and know the truth. Notice that. They know, believe and know the truth. And yet, they're saying, oh, you shouldn't eat that. That's not familiar. Right? But what I want to focus on, forbid marriage. They forbid marriage. And, I mean, ironically, you know, the Roman Catholic Church and many other uh, institutions have done this. Even other cults and sects over the years have done this. Uh, I mean, it's a great way to destroy your movement. Forbidding marriage. And of course, I mean, there's so many passages. I mean, there's multiple from Old and New Testament. Mark 10, 6, very well known. Then Jesus left Capernaum and went down to the region of Judea and in the area east of the Jordan River. Once again, crowds gathered around him. And as usual, he was teaching them. Some Pharisees came and tried to trap him with the question, should a man be allowed to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them with a question. What did Moses say in the law about divorce? They replied, well, he permitted them. They said a man can give 
his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away. It's true. Doesn't make it right, by the way. Doesn't make it right at all. Jesus doesn't affirm this. But Jesus responded. He wrote this commandment only as a concession to the hardness of your hearts. But God made the male and female from the beginning of creation. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united in one, since they are no longer two, but one. Let no one split apart what God has joined together. This is, of course, a divorce, but what it's doing, clearly, is affirming marriage. And, of course, marriage between a man and a woman. This not only affirms marriage as a union between a man and a woman, and that's all, and also two people, and also the gender roles specific of a man and a woman. But all of this is just under mass uh, uh, attack and confusion. Confusion and attack. And really, it, it is from the enemy. I mean, it really is. And until we start to remember that, or, or go back to remembering that, and then moving forward on that, right? Because we can't expect people who don't love God to want to uphold his word. We can't. So at minimum, as Christians, if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Christ watching this, treat your marriage well. Maybe your marriage is in shambles. Maybe you've gotten a divorce. Maybe you knew it was bad, whatever. Maybe you're not married. But what we need to do as believers, and I think we failed in the last you know few decades especially, um, is honoring, right? What is Hebrews 13? I'm not just talking about these people only. I mean, this woman's obviously an unbeliever, obviously selfish, obviously confused, obviously has zero idea what marriage is. She didn't marry the color pink. She just didn't. Like, we all know that, right? But so sometimes we're still like, well, uh, two dudes, maybe. No, also not two dudes. It's not marriage. It might be, it's something else. I get it. It's a relationship. You want to call it that, I guess. But it's not marriage. But this whole thing is an assault against God's word. That's what it is. Because if you can assault God's word and weaken what it is and then change it, this is what materialistic evolution has been doing for the better part of 100 years. And that, of course, you know, same-sex marriage and abortion and all that stems from, from that. Not the only root, but one of the many. Many. But what does the enemy want to do? What does, he, what does Satan do to Jesus in the temptation? Right Before Jesus starts his ministry, has God said? Did he really say that? And then he quotes scripture, but twisting it out of context. So sometimes people will say, well, did God do it? He didn't really say that. You're a bigot. And then they'll just name call. And somebody might name call me, right? Or they might name call you. Oh, you're just a hater. That's not an argument. You want to do that? That's literally going to affect me. Zero percent. Okay. You'll be like the child, the skateboarder kid in this article. Your child. And as children, we do that. As adults, it's pointless. Especially when there's an actual, one person has an actual argument, and one person has literally no argument. It's not just about politics. It's not just about society or, or Republican or Democrat or, or some Supreme Court decision or some nonsense like that. Rather, it's reality itself. And ultimately, the God of reality is the one who stepped into creation to redeem the wickedness. Because this isn't new, right? Now, a woman marrying pink in Las Vegas is new in one sense. But despising marriage and hating marriage, because obviously she's not actually getting married to a real man, uh, is not new. But that's why Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's why Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God, the Father, raised him from the dead, you're saved. You're saved from this present wicked generation. And that's what the gospel is. A lot of people think as well, it's being good. You got to be good. You got to be righteous. You got to do these works on your own. Oh, so you're saying if I get married, then I'm good with God. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm saying you have to repent of your wickedness. Because this woman, regardless of whether she marries the color pink or not, is still a sinner. Just like the two dudes are still sinners. Or... The man who gets a divorce or multiple divorces is still a sinner. Until you have your whole world rocked and your whole affections and, and everything reoriented to Christ, who is better, right? If he forgives you much and your sin, you can then forgive others exponentially more than you ever thought possible. That's one aspect of the gospel, not the only. But the main is God loving the world. 
Testament, God, the Old Testament, God in the Old Testament, loving the world, loving the New Testament, quote unquote, <laughs> the modern vernacular. Sending Jesus so that anybody who believes in him is not will not perish, will not eternally die, but have newness and everlasting life. It's a massive difference. That's what Jesus came to do, not to show as a moral example, not to just be, you know, a good person or whatever. No, rather to take on flesh and dwell among us, to forgive us, to wash us clean, and to make us new. Repent. Turn to him. If you have not, if you if you're watching this, turn to Christ. And if you if you haven't, and you if you haven't, turn to Christ. He will take you. Don't think your sin is too big or don't think you don't have it. All have sinned. And fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody. Everybody's lied. Everybody's cheated. Even if you've never done anything sexually, whatever, you know, immoral, which probably isn't true. Let's be real here. If you're, no, if you're north of, you know, 12 or 13, uh, most likely you've had sexual craziness, right? Even if it's just a thought. In fact, Jesus says, if you look with lust, you've already committed adultery. That's breaking God's law. It says, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not bear false witness. And so on. So, anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, go ahead and do all the youtube stuff. Like, comment, share. It's